Hi, this is Faith Vicinanza, and this is my first show in 12 years, and I'm going to give you a quick virtual gallery tour. So what I've done is I've grouped the oil paintings, followed by the acrylics, followed by pen and ink, followed by photography. And we'll do a close-up of them as we go. So this first piece, I'll talk a little bit about each one. Um, this is oil on canvas, and the canvas is hand-stretched by my teacher. I was taking one-on-one um, -on -one lessons with Glen River for three years. and. This painting took seven months to do. It's many, 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 many layers. And if you are familiar with oil, you know oil has to dry, so it, this took a long time to do. And it's called Chaos Theory. And then the next two are small pieces, and both of these were created as a result of using spare paint. So I'll get back to those in one second. This is a painting I did when I was 21, and it was originally in acrylics, and it had gotten damaged and uh, was split right down the middle. The canvas was torn. So for my 50th birthday, my oldest son secretly took this out of storage, took it to a person to have it repaired, and gave it to me as a birthday present, which was really a wonderfully sweet thing to do. And for my 60th birthday, he and his wife paid to have it framed, but it was framed after I repainted it. So even though it was repaired, it was, you know, a second rate job. And what I did is I renovated this by painting in oil over the acrylic. So I repainted the entire picture. It took two months to do. And this one is um, not for sale. So I will say not for sale on some of these. And these two were actually done using spare oil paint as I was recreating this in oil. So when I had oils left over, I had these two canvases going and I was just using whatever oil was available. You can see the pink theme, obviously. That's very familiar between them. So that's some of my oil paintings. I put up 30 pieces in this show and I selected um, uh, from all the different kinds of medium that I do, except mosaic, and I do not do watercolor. Um, but I don't have a portable mosaic exhibit. I'm working on one. And this is acrylic, and then all of these here, which is predominantly what I'm doing these days, and we'll talk a little bit about all the dot paintings. Um, this one was done about five years ago in Rochester, Minnesota. So I was uh, staying there for eight months working on a uh, gig for the Mayo Clinic. So besides painting, and I sing, and I do mosaic work, I also do renovations of houses, and I have a day job, which is as a cybersecurity professional, and I am uh, always eager to tell people that only 10% of the entire global population of cybersecurity professionals are women. So I was out at, uh, working at Mayo Clinic on a consulting gig for eight months, and I got involved in a local gallery there because I was essentially living there and did a lot of paintings, and this is one of the paintings from my uh, stay in Rochester, Minnesota. So uh, I don't have a title for it. Maybe it should be called the Mayo Clinic painting. But this next grouping are all done in acrylics. So up to here, this is all acrylics. It's all dot painting. So what I mean by dot painting, um, and if you can zoom in a little bit, try this larger one. Um, and if you take a close look, every single application of paint on the canvas is a dot of acrylic paint. So this one took a couple of months to do. This one took a couple of weeks to do. This took a, two, about two weeks to do. This took a couple of days. This took a couple of days. Um, this one took a couple of weeks. And you know, so they, they, it depends. This one took a couple of weeks. This, I had two of this size. This is the largest size I've done. And I uh, just sold one a couple of weeks ago, the same size. And um, so all of these are um, 
available and you can get my contact information off of my website which my adorable grandson who's filming this will make available in the video. So the, this is my acrylics that are all done with uh, dot uh, paint. So by dot painting, I, so uh, Justin, my adorable oldest grandson is filming this and if you would zoom in on this one, um, what you'll see is that every single application of color on the canvas is a dot of acrylic paint. So this one took two months to do and they take anywhere from uh, two days for something really small to two months for this size. And I actually have a show coming up at a local gallery. It's the Arts Escape on Main Street in Southbury and it's gonna be a two month show strictly of dot paintings. And one of the things it will include is a mantle sized dot painting piece, which will be four feet by five feet that I'm working on. All right, so I have a, a show coming up and actually when I put a proposal into the gallery and I brought in oils and acrylics and my photography and the dot paintings, um, Becky, who's the director of the gallery, looked at these and said she didn't want anything else, which was pretty flattering. I've been doing the dot paintings now for about uh, six months, and so I, my, I'm now moving up to doing one that's going to be four feet by five feet. I'm anxious to see how that works out, but I'm, it'll take me a few months to do, I'm sure. So I've played around with different ways to do these. So this is on a canvas board, and canvas board, and this is actually painted right on foam core the stuff that you put behind paintings when you're framing them. And this is a piece of wood panel. So I, I've tried different mediums and this is framed behind glass and this one is framed behind glass, as is this one. So when I first started framing them, I tried a couple different options and in the end I don't really um, do the glass anymore. I really prefer that they're not behind glass. So what I do is I actually seal them um, and then frame them without glass. So that, these are all the dot mandalas or dot paintings. And so you can look up Aboriginal art, uh, which is a form of dot painting. So I've done a couple of pieces that are not the mandalas that are more in the line of Aboriginal art. And then the next grouping is pen and ink. This is not my piece. This is actually my daughter-in-law, Vera Patel. Of course, now that she's married to my son, it's Vera Michael Arroyo. Um, and she, when I first met her about 10 years ago when they first started dating, she did this in freehand and gave it to me as a gift. And when I saw this, I became so enamored with it that I started doing pen and ink. And for a few years, I was doing a lot of pen and ink, or m multiple media, I would say, because it's more than just pen and ink. What you'll see is I have a few up, uh, of them up here for display. And this one is all pen and ink. And then these, uh, these have um, watercolor in them and glitter in them. And, but it's mostly pen and ink. So um, I did a bunch of these and I have probably about two dozen of these out in the world in different people's collections. And including my family has about a half a dozen of these. And then, um, and, and I'm working on a piece that's this size right now, but I've been working on it for months because the pen and inks take a long time to do. It takes months, months, and months to do one of these. This one took me about two weeks to do, this tiny little one. And part of that is because I work full time. Uh, this is not for sale. This is not for sale. This is not for sale. And now we're gonna get into some photographs. So what I did is I grouped the photographs as the last section. And this is a magnolia taken in Charleston, South Carolina. And it was as almost all of the photos that are in this section was part of the bike trip that Peter and I took two years before um, he passed away from uh, cancer. But 
We spent three months on the road and took about 5,000 digital images. And so the last show that I did was with Peter in 2006 at the Newtown Library. And it's good to know that, uh, like the Newtown Library show was booked a year in advance. The gallery show that's coming up at um, Arts Escape is booked seven months in advance. Some shows you've booked two months in advance. So if you're an artist and you're looking to get your work out there and put shows on, you should expect that you have to book things fairly well in advance and orient yourself to the long game. So uh, what I do with a lot of my photographs and even my artwork is I am always collecting um, uh, frames. So I do all of my own matting and all of my own framing. And for instance, uh, I rarely ever pay more than 15 bucks for a frame at a tag sale or an estate sale. So this gorgeous frame, I got in an estate sale, it had a print in it, I removed the print and put my photograph in there and you know cleaned it up and I always, and I won't do it on the big one, but um, uh, let me see if I can grab a small one here. So um, after I mat and frame my products, I always put a dust cover on. So I'm very particular about the quality of the finished product. So all of my pictures, I, almost all of those have a dust cover on the back. Some of the paintings are open canvas. It's not uncommon with a painting on a large canvas. So this one is from the bike trip. Peter and I spent three months cycling in 2005 from Key West, Florida to St. Stephen, Canada. And this is in Frenchman's Bay in Maine, uh, the last state. We went from Florida all the way, like I said, to Canada. This is not from the bike trip, but this is from a butterfly sanctuary in Key West, Florida. And that was actually taken by Peter. These two, are actually from Lake Lilanona in Newtown, Connecticut, where Peter and I lived for 16 years. So uh, these were from the year that Peter bought me a brand new Nikon with all, all of the trimmings um, as a Christmas gift. And I went out and I shot winter pictures. <laughs> so, um, so this is from New Hampshire, from the bike trip. This is actually from my garden in Wilkett. This is from my garden in Wilkett, and this is from my garden in Wilkett. And this is from Fort Tartuga in um, the islands below the Keys. And those are, those are some of my photographs. And then this piece, which is anchoring the show, is my daughter-in-law, V, we call her V. And she's also an artist. So uh, we have a shared studio space and um, she, ha she paints differently than I do. Um, I could not do this, I don't think. I'm, you know, we, we can do what we can do and we can't do what we can't do. But this is a um, piece by V and I wanted to anchor the show with a big piece and so we've got her piece in the show to help us do that. And you can get information about the works here on uh, my website, which will be available on the video.